Hello, this is Jamie A. Heidel, the Articulate Autistic, and I have a brand new video for you today. This one is called, Why Autistic People Do That, Video 31, Don't Punish Us With Our Own Behaviors. Now, this kind of goes in line with some stuff that I've been posting on my Facebook. If you haven't checked that out, it's facebook.com um, forward slash the Articulate Autistic. I'll put a link in the description below, unless of course you're seeing this on my Facebook page. But I had written something about, or I'd actually written two posts about the fact that there are certain ways that you can communicate with an autistic person if you are a non-autistic person, if that um, autistic person, excuse me, has offended you. And I'm going to repeat the formula that I've posted in this video so that you'll know but I wanna take um, a slightly different angle on this. When I say don't punish us with our own behaviors, what I've started to understand, and I've probably understood this for a while, but I didn't know how to articulate it. One of the things that I've noticed in you know, some of my past relationships, friendships, dealings with certain family members, I've noticed that somebody if I do something or say something that seems offensive or a little strange or a little odd to them, their perception of it is that that was odd, I notice a lot of times that in order to, for two NT people to communicate, neurotypical people, you know, somebody says something in a strange tone of voice, maybe, and then the neurotypical person will mirror that behavior back to them to show them, hey, you just sounded a little, a little odd there, or, you know, it's kind of like, they sort of mirror the behavior. And I think that neurotypical people can communicate effectively that way. But if that happens with an autistic person and a non-autistic person, it becomes incredibly confusing and it can also be very scary. Also, you're not teaching us anything. I can tell you that I've been in situations where, it took me a long time to realize this, but something that I said or did was taken the wrong way and in order to show me what I'd done, that person would behave in a very similar way towards me. I didn't understand that they were behaving in a similar way towards me because I had done something to offend them. I had no idea. I was in probably another, another place. Uh, you know, it was coming from a different intention, a different perspective, a different place. But for them, it was a purposeful behavior. So they thought, oh, I'll show her and they would start, um, excuse me, they'd start doing the same behavior. Let's say I was um, alone and I just wanted to spend some time by myself, which is most of the time, and I was alone for hours and, and I lost track of time and I, you know, because that's what I do. And the person is like, oh, I'm going to show her. I'm not going to call her or text her or have anything to do with her. We'll see how she likes it. And it's like, I like it just fine. And the sad thing is I'm probably not going to notice. I mean, if you're, if you disappear for a long time and I talk to you regularly and then I might be like, Oh, something, something might be wrong. But this goes back to the very, very first uh, video I did before I even started this series is that I don't text people first. Usually I don't make first contact. I am trying really hard to start doing that. Um, but it's definitely not something that is natural for me. So, if you're like, I'll show her and I won't call her for days, I'll be like, I don't even notice your absence, sorry. So that's not showing me anything. And then of course, if you tell me that, oh, I showed you because I did this and I was, I didn't talk to you for days. And I, I, if I say, you know, and I say this very literally, if I say, oh, I didn't even notice, um, the non-autistic person's gonna get very offended. Like, what do you mean you didn't even notice? I'm not important to you. And it's like, not, not, no, that's not what I mean. So, um, you're not really going to get anywhere. If you are a non-autistic person trying to communicate with an autistic person and, you know, say, um, let's say I gave you a dirty look and I didn't realize it, or my tone of voice was angrier than I intended it to be. And you give me a dirty look and you make an angry tone and, and say something back to me. I'm going to be very startled and confused by that because I had no conscious idea that my face looked like that or that I looked angry or that I sounded angry. I didn't know. So for me, you're the first person initiating a disagreement between us, not me. So when you make the face that I may have made towards you and you use the same tone that I may have used, 
I understand you're just trying to show me how I sounded. But for me, you're the one who's initiating a confrontation because I don't see that as you mirroring me. I see that as you being suddenly out of nowhere, angry and um, upset. And I don't know where that's coming from. And I can tell you that I'd be like, well, why are you, you know, I might ask somebody what's wrong, you know, why, why did your emotions change all of a sudden? Or why did, why is the way you're behaving towards me suddenly so different than it was a second ago? What happened? And the person might be like, oh, you know what you did. And I'm telling you something, you know what you did is one of the biggest triggers for me because no, no, I don't know what I did. And many, 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 many autistic people will tell you the same thing. No, we don't know what we did wrong. We don't know what we did to offend you. And mirroring that same behavior is just confusing. And it's very, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, discombobulating. You know, it's, it's like, you know, it's like we're walking like through the house and somebody takes a, a rug and just yoink, takes it right out from under us. And we're on the floor, not understanding how we got there. Um, it's just that kind of behavior doesn't get you anywhere. It'll make the non-autistic person really frustrated because they're not going to be getting their needs met. And it makes the autistic person, um, scared and not able to trust you or not feel like that we can trust you. So that is something that, um, I wish I could think of a few more examples. I mean, there, there's examples I can use with, um, be a little bit more, more intimate, um, I did the sex episode, so if you want to see the sex episode um, where I talk a lot more in detail about this, that's uh, number 30, so I will link that below. But when I talked about uh, sexual communication between two people, I can tell you that I was in a relationship where because I wasn't interested at a specific time or when my partner was interested, if I was interested later on, she wasn't, but it wasn't that she wasn't interested. She was punishing me by not being interested. So the two of us hardly ever got together. And I feel like, you know, I feel like a lot of relationships can suffer if, oh, geez, almost lost my phone. I feel like a lot of relationships can suffer if that's the approach between a neurotypical person and an autistic person. Um, and I'm going to tell you the approach that would be so much better. Um, so yes, do not punish people with their own behaviors because nine times out of 10, you're getting the wrong message across and there's no communication happening. Um, you're not going to get your needs met. You're going to scare the heck out of us and we're going to become afraid of you and you're going to become resentful of us. And it's just not pretty. So I'm going to give you the formula. If an autistic person says or does something that you find offensive, here is the formula that has worked for me. And it seems like from the response I got on my Facebook page that it's a formula that works for a lot of people. So here we go. Pardon me, I am gonna read this off. Okay, here it goes, sorry. One, take a deep breath. Remember more likely than not, we did not just purposefully try to upset you. Two, make sure you have our full and undivided attention in a calm and even tone, tell us that you have something important to say to us. That's important. You need to get our attention. Three, make sure that we are alone together or off to the side. So we are not distracted or feeling sensory overwhelm. Four, tell us what we said or did that was offensive to you. Five, tell us why it bothered you and where applicable, why it is inappropriate to do or say. And I have an asterisk next to this because why is absolutely imperative to our understanding. If you just say something like, that's just how it's done, or that's, that's just the way it is, or everybody knows that, or anything like that, we're not going to learn from what you're saying. No learning will actually take place. We'll just be like, okay, I'll remember not to say that specific comment in that specific tone. But two hours later, we could say something that's very similar to that. And you're going to think that it's done on purpose and it's not done, done on purpose. Why is absolutely integral to our understanding. So please answer the question of why, even if everybody should know this, we would not ask you if we knew. Uh, six, tell us what we could have said or done instead and why that is preferable. 
that's very, 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 very important. Um, I can say when I was a child, maybe even when I was a teenager and young adult, um, that people would tell me what not to do, but nobody ever told me what I was expected to do. And that was the missing piece for me to understand how I was supposed to communicate with people. And seven, and this is very, very important too, reassure us that we are okay and that our relationship with you is still okay. You might even want to start that at the beginning of the entire um, formula because it's very easy for people who are on the spectrum to feel as though, oh, we're, we're about to lose another friend because it happens all the time because of the way our brains are wired. So that's it for this video. I hope that you got something positive out of it. I'm going to leave a link to all of the videos in the description below, as well as a link to my Facebook page. And I want to thank you very much for listening, and I will see you in the next video.